Alexa, I'm out of ideas for what anime to watch. Can you help me fix that? Hell no, I don't want anything to do with Japan. Why? Because instead of Alexa, they keep calling me Arexa. Questions. Something we as anime fans get asked or ask others day in and out. Who's your best girl? Do you dress up as these characters? Was light right or wrong? Why do you have that thing? When will Hunter Hunter finally be off hiatus? I can't count that high. Stuff like that can be awkward or difficult for us to answer, but none are as challenging as a question that feels like it should be so simple. It's hey, do you have any good anime recommendations? Define good. Some of you might be thinking, how, how is that hard? There are plenty of widely praised series to suggest such as Code Geass, Steins Gate, Brotherhood, BAM, Easy Life. Unfortunately, I believe that there are plenty more factors that you need to consider. How exactly should they watch it? Subbed? Dubbed? Bugged? What if I want to recommend something beyond the most popular series? Is there something weird that might turn them off that I'm forgetting? And who exactly is asking? Are they new to anime? Are they aware that 70% of you guys watching aren't subscribed? I figure it's best to begin with what is likely the most common awkward occurrence when recommending anime to people. When it's someone who is new to the medium, but you start to remember all of its weird quirks, so you don't want to scare them off. There is an added level of responsibility to it as you're introducing them to a whole new world with different traits and quirks. You aren't just throwing them another live-action film, you hold the potential to turn someone into an avid anime fan or someone who now thinks very lowly of the medium and maybe even lowly of you as a person. You must remember that they're an anime virgin, so think of it like you are giving a girl her first fingering. You can't just jam your whole fist in there and tell them to watch Keijo right away, which would make them afraid of it or anime for a long time. They need to be lubed up first with something like a safe action or slice of life series. Though sometimes having seen so many anime, I can forget what actually was a safe show. It'd be great if there were some type of bot that could detect this. Like if I could just be like, Alexa, I got someone looking for a strong mystery thriller anime. Attack on Titan, uh, did that have any weird fan service scenes in it that I can't remember? I've detected zero, but if you count the thick naked titans, then once again, I can't count that high. You see, I'm afraid of the awkward situations that could come about. Like that newcomer you had recommended Gurren Lagann to. Suddenly they're asking why the tits of a 14-year-old character are always center screen. Or maybe you gotta give uh, explanations such as, well, technically she's a 5,000 year old vampire. Now that's a number I can work with. One might also find themselves questioned over why certain things in anime work the way they do. Are the skulls in Japan actually like this? How the hell do all these Japanese honorifics work? Why are there so many pointless beach themed episodes out of nowhere? An even worse situation is when someone is asking about anime for a kid. Upon hearing this, I gotta put my brain into this sort of deep-thinking weeb state. I'm like, oh god, was there any cliché anime bullshit in that one? What can I give this kid? Let's see, uh, he's in school. Maybe he'll enjoy a rom-com in a school setting. Wait, what if it makes him develop the hots for his younger sister? Oh, My Hero Academia, that's a shonen, so it's marketed for kids. Wait, fucking Mineta. All of this nonsense is probably why you'll see so many people resorting to the same safe recommendations over and over. Of course, what I've mentioned so far aren't the only challenges that suggesting anime poses. The main casts of so many shows are kids, when they don't necessarily need to be. While I enjoy many of them, there's unfortunately a lack of notable series focused on older characters. When someone asks me, Hey, you know anything with a main character who's going through a midlife crisis? Man, I, I don't know. The sick high school girl in clan ad because she's gonna be dead in a few years? Plus with all these kid characters, there are so many of them that begin and remain massive pussies for a long time, which hinders a lot of shows that are otherwise good. Listen to me, Eddie. Eddie, it's gym class all over again! <laughs> Anyways, many people have said, don't judge a book by its cover. But with anime, you must tell people, don't judge a series by its title. 
There are so many series with miles long titles that you're going to have to tell someone. Combined with the fact that we might be bad at pronouncing some of the words, I'll sometimes forget what the show I'm watching is called, even if I'm fairly enjoying it well. Yo, dude, you should watch this dope anime that's currently airing. Oh yeah? What's it called? Uh, I, I, I forget, but there's uh, this chick with nice tits who dresses up in stuff. Then you've got series that can't seem to make up their mind about how to name all their different seasons, rather than remaining as one. Big Butts Season 2, Big Butts Season 3 Part 2, Big Butts Re, Big Butts Final Final Season. It's like an artist or video editor who keeps mistaking when they're done with their project file names. All in all, it's another layer of BS that you gotta explain to someone when getting them in to certain anime. Speaking of BS, have you ever attempted to make a friend watch stuff like the Monogatari's or the Fate franchise? Explaining where exactly they should start or the best order to watch them in can seem tedious. I'm still not completely sure myself even after watching them. You want to better understand the stuff in Fate Zero? Well, you gotta watch Unlimited Blade Works. You want to better understand that? Well, you gotta watch these other ones. And you want to understand why certain specific powers are the way that they are? We'll go play the hentai visual novels the series originated from. But hey, at least it's free from fillers or recap episodes. Some series will have someone asking which parts are canon and which parts they shouldn't bother watching. Naruto? You gotta be like, okay, skip those 30 episodes, don't bother with this entire arc, and then skip these next 50. You might as well just whip out a Ninja Uno deck composed entirely of skip cards to never let them have a turn. So many shows last forever like Naruto 2. One Piece? You might as well tell them to die of old age. A lot of them never seem to finish either. No Game No Life? No Game No Life because you'll be dead by the time it gets a second season. Now back to if it's someone who's an anime newbie. You're probably also going to have to deal with them asking where to watch it. For a good while, so many series were spread across different streaming platforms, and before that, there were barely any legal and convenient ways to view anime, so you had to be like, uh, I don't know, gangbang your wallet with that $80 set of DVDs? Get your computer infected by LimeWire? Fortunately, this problem barely exists anymore, as anime is more accessible than ever. One unfortunate thing that still remains with these services, though, is that you'll be telling someone to watch a version of some shows with bad censorship or poor localization, but hey, maybe that's a blessing in disguise because you don't want Jotaro's cigarette turning kids into chain smokers. If someone is a friendless loser who knows no one that could give them anime suggestions, then what exactly can they do? Well, there are a decent amount of popular anime websites or forums through My Anime List, Crunchyroll, or various anime subreddits. One thing I've sadly noticed with them, however, is that the same mainstream shows seem to be getting whored out over and over. If you lack the anime knowledge to make more specific requests, like looking for an anime that's similar to blank, or something with a certain anime trope, it can be difficult to get things beyond the most popular stuff. And along with these request topics, there will always be that one asshole out of nowhere going, Boku no Pico! Or some dude who aggressively suggests nothing but Jojo. Watch Jojo you pussy or I'll set the fucking thermostat to 500 degrees. In these forums, you're also going to find people who had their anime cherry popped long ago and have now seen a lot, which presents a new challenge. I've got a few friends who've seen over a thousand series, and they'll tell me, Hey, I'm looking for something new to watch. And I'm like, shit, I don't know, bro. What time is it? Time for you to not get a watch? They've grown quite tired of all the cliches in anime, so they might be looking for a show that's lacking them. Their request can also get super specific. Alexa, I'm looking for an isekai MC who isn't a little bitch, doesn't get hit by a truck, doesn't start or become super OP, doesn't have a generic anime haircut or harem, and can also squirt milk out of their belly button. I, um, I know I've ragged heavily on the nature of recommending anime to people, but it does indeed have its benefits. Compared to some other mediums, it seems like there's so many more options to choose from, as every season there's more anime coming out than there are enraged readers of Rent a Girlfriend. Meanwhile, the animation generally appears miles better than a lot of American cartoons. And don't even get me started with live action. 
Why bother telling someone to watch a Nickelodeon show about high schoolers when the high schoolers in anime can have head movement like this? With America cartoons, it also feels like a decent majority of them are solely intended for comedic purposes. But with anime, many of them exist to be watched for reasons beyond that. You can share one to make someone experience a moral thriller or find a newfound interest in a sport. You could make them appreciate the simpler things with a slice of life series, or have them feel better about their dick size through a self-insert power fantasy. You can turn a girl into someone who won't ever shut the fuck up about gay dudes. You can put them in the shoes of a predator or have them watch a harem anime so they cheat on their wife. You can tell them, hey, don't watch that euphoria trash. Watch the original. You know what? On second thought, anime fucking sucks. Go watch SpongeBob. Aye aye, Captain. Hey, what is cracking, Booty Brigade? Hope y'all enjoyed that one as usual. Uh, wish I could have got it out uh, a little bit earlier, but the editing process just took me longer than usual. Gonna be ha try to have one more video out before the seasonal anime video I do. Uh, probably gonna have to make that one a shorter style, because I am going to SakuraCon uh, mid of April, and uh, I hope maybe I can use that to put out some cringe content or whatever, some type of video. Other than that, usual Patreon thanks to my supporters, Shin AMV and Snap Zenith. And if you want to support me on Patreon, uh, links to that are in the description below. And, you know, smash all the buttons so that can also help me out. That's it for this time. Peace out, Booty Brigade.